If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. I apologize for not getting videos out for the past couple of days. I am currently across the world in Nigeria for a wedding for a friend of mine. Um, so with that being said, I'm recording from my hotel. Um, but today we're going to have a super interesting episode. We're going to be talking about legal battles, technology wars, and the future of energy as it pertains to the electric vehicle space. So if you're new to the channel, you already know what to do. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're new or returning, hit the like button, click the notification bell icon, leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us to continue to do research, to put out content, to share this good information with people and grow and to reach a broader audience. So we truly appreciate you for that. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode. First, let's talk about something that has become increasingly important in the EV space, the battle against misinformation. You know, five years ago, we were all focused on battery range and charging speeds. Now we're seeing major players like Neo taking legal action to protect the integrity of their brand. And this tells us something crucial about where the industry is headed. Let me break down what's happening with Neo's recent legal action. They're not just going up against one or two random uh, bloggers, they're launching a comprehensive legal campaign combating several bloggers across several different platforms. We're talking about Weibo, WeChat, Doyin, the whole social media ecosystem in China. Now let's put this into context. Back in May 2023, um, Neo had actually created dedicated legal accounts on these platforms. Think about that. An EV company thought that they needed to establish a permanent legal presence on social media. That's how serious this has become and it's paying off. They won a case that resulted in a Doyen account having to pay 600,000 yuan in damages. That's over $82,000. But here's where it gets really interesting. Remember the rumor about BYD acquiring Neo? Well, that wasn't just some random speculation. Three people were actually detained for spreading this false information, including employees from another car company. Now, I personally can't help but think what this means for the industry. We're seeing corporate espionage and uh, information warfare playing out in real time. And it's not just Neo. BYD, the world's largest uh, EV maker by volume, just won a case where uh, someone paid over 2 million yuan in damages. So this is becoming an industry-wide phenomenon. What we're witnessing is the EV industry growing up and facing the same challenges that traditional automakers have been facing for decades, but obviously with a modern social media twist. Now let's talk about something that always gets me truly excited, the LiDAR versus pure vision debate. This isn't just a technical discussion, it's a, phil it's a philosophical battle about the future of autonomous driving, and it's fascinating how it's playing out in different markets. Li Zhang, Li Auto CEO, just made what I consider a brilliant observation. He said that Elon Musk, if he ever drove on Chinese roads at nighttime, he would be using LiDAR. Now let me break down why this statement is so powerful. First, let's talk about technical differences. In complete darkness, even the best cameras can only see about 100 meters ahead. LiDAR though, it's detecting objects at nearly 200 meters ahead. That's nearly double the detection range. And in Lee Otto's case, this isn't just about bragging rights. They're using this capability to implement emergency braking at speeds of 130 kilometers per hour. But here's where Tesla's arguments get interesting. Their VP of external affairs, Grace Tao, makes a compelling case about how roads and regulations were designed for human eyes, optic nerves, and brains. Tesla's philosophy is that if we want to achieve autonomous driving, we need to replicate the human experience as closely as possible. So let's break down both sides of the coin, both arguments. Tesla's pure vision approach mimics human perception, has a potentially lower cost, simpler decision-making processes, and it's designed to work 
with existing infrastructure. Lee Otto and others' LiDAR approach has superior night vision capability, better performance in poor visibility, enhanced safety features, and adapts to challenging road conditions. But anyways, this next part is where everything sort of starts to connect. While we're debating legal battles and sensors, there's an absolutely revolutionary development happening in the background. That's vehicle to grid technology or V to G. And this could change everything. Let me paint a picture for you of what's coming. By mid 2024, uh, we're looking at new energy vehicles capturing 50% of China's market share. We're talking about nearly 25 million vehicles on the road. Now here's the game changer though. These aren't just vehicles anymore. They're mobile power stations. Let me break down a recent NEO demonstration that definitely blew my mind. They took 50 vehicles. That's right, only 50. And with these uh, 50 vehicles, they were able to power 133 homes for an entire day. Think about that scale for a moment. NEO already has 2,300 battery swapping stations, and that's China that I'm talking about. This isn't just a charging network anymore, it's evolving into what they're calling a virtual power plant. Now let's connect all these dots. The legal battles we're seeing, they're happening because the stakes are enormous. We're not just talking about car sales anymore, we're talking about car companies that could control a significant portion of the national power infrastructure. The LiDAR debate, it's about more than autonomous driving, it's about how companies are approaching the challenges of autonomous driving uh, and the various approaches that they're taking in different markets. And vehicle to grid technology, this could be the technology that solves one of the biggest issues in the energy space storage and distribution. So let's talk about what this means for investors and the broader market, of course. We're seeing a perfect storm of maturing technology, increasing market competition, infrastructure development, regulatory evolution, and energy grid transformation. Each of these factors is significant on their own, but together they're reshaping entire industries. Now I've got a question for all of you. With all of these factors, which one do you think will have the biggest impact over the next few years. The legal framework being established, the autonomous driving debate, or the potential of vehicle to grid technology. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. You know what fascinates me most about all of this? We're watching an industry go from, can they make you know, sustainable cars to how will they reshape our entire energy infrastructure? The questions we're asking now seem to have been science fiction years ago. But before we close out, let me leave you with this thought. What we're witnessing right now isn't just the evolution of the automotive industry. It's the transformation about how we think about transportation, energy, and urban infrastructure. The companies that understand this are the ones that will reshape our future. That's all for today's deep dive on the Courtside Financial Podcast. I hope you found it useful, helpful, informative, insightful, at the very least entertaining. If you're new to the channel or you found it to be any of those things, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the like button, click the notification bell icon, and leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us to reach a broader audience and continue to grow and put out great information for you guys. So anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next episode of the CF Podcast. This is Obi signing off. Peace out.